This is ridiculous. I mean, the technology is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I I I got more in-flight shots uh -huh. in the last 30 minutes than I did in the last 10 years of photography. That's I, incredible. Like, what kind of gremlins are living in this thing? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like it's gotten unfair. It's gotten. I don't even consider. I mean, it's it's like the skill. Uh -huh. It's nuts. It's really exciting though. It's exciting, but man, alive. It's a challenge right away, huh? I like it's not even a challenge anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's nuts. Hello friends and welcome to the Nikon Z9. So it's here. More and more people are getting this camera in their hands. I was lucky enough to get mine uh, last week and I've been photographing birds like a crazy person. I think I, uh, I think there's no thinking. Every day this week I was trying to photograph birds. I've been kind of psychotic about it. I mean, I think I have a problem. If you're looking for opinions on whether or not to buy this camera, this is not that. This today, this video today is strictly about the autofocus system. Now I want to give you full disclosure. I'm not a professional photographer. Uh, having a YouTube channel does not make me uh, a subject matter expert on anything. Uh, I have a full-time job. I love photography. Absolutely love it. Uh, like a lot of you, I probably spend too much on camera gear uh, because I enjoy it. On my free time when I'm out there photographing birds, I want it to be a wonderful uh, experience. And I've learned through experience that the better equipment, uh, you know, you just, it makes things a little bit easier. I may have been one of those guys in the past that would argue that you don't need the absolute best gear to get the best images. And I wholeheartedly stick by that. You can get great images, absolutely world-class images uh, with a D7200 or a D500 or a D850. It's a fact. Many people out there in the world are doing it. Uh, so this Nikon Z9, I promise you, is not going to you're not gonna notice that your images are world-class better than if you have a Nikon D850. What this is about is that Nikon has put in technology that makes it easier for you to get those incredible images. Without further ado, let's jump right into the autofocus system. Okay, here's how I use my autofocus system. Uh, first of all, I'm a back button focus guy. Uh, one of my friends, Kurt, uh, borrowed my camera for a few hours one day and he noticed that I had focus set up on my front button as well. I didn't even realize you could turn that off. I've been doing this for years. You can turn that off and it makes it a lot better. So back button focus and you're snapping. This is no focusing happen whatsoever with the front button. Uh, love that Kurt, so thank you for doing that for me. Uh, second thing is I always set up this front function button for uh, adjusting my focus modes. So when I press that front button, I roll the front dial and it goes between the single point and the dynamic mode and 3D and, and full mode. And then if I roll the back dial, it goes between AFS, AFC, continuous focus, and manual focus. Uh, one more thing to note, as you're watching this footage, you are seeing what I see through the viewfinder. That's not always pretty. A lot of shaking sometimes, a lot of me adjusting my arms and in, in, against my body to get better stabilized. But more importantly, it's to show the autofocus mode and what it's doing and how it's grabbing. Bottom line, I didn't clean up the footage to get rid of any of the shake, um, which is another way for me saying I'm sorry for some of the shaky footage. 
All right, so let's talk about these autofocus modes. The first one is something you've seen from every camera from uh, the D33000 all the way up, and that is a single point autofocus mode, which does exactly what you think it does. Um, you put it on the point, you press the button, and it focuses on it. Uh, then they have a series of three dynamic modes. Uh, they've got a small, medium, and large dynamic mode. If you're familiar with the D500 or the D850 or the D5 or the D6, uh, you'll remember these. And I would say that this was the best way to track birds in flight. You would use that dynamic AF mode. I did not use any of those modes the entire day. I didn't even use the small area autofocus mode, which is a small box that you can put on the subject, and if there's an eye, it will track it, but you gotta keep the box on the subject for that to work. I didn't use the larger AF mode, which does exactly what the small AF does. You gotta keep the box on the subject for it to stay in subject. I exclusively used the autofocus 3D mode and the autofocus full mode, all of which have the animal eye detection, face eye detection, and the automatic uh, detection of cars or whatever the subject is in the scene. So let's talk about the 3D mode first. Uh, this is the mode that I found myself going to as a default most of the time. Photographing birds, they're not always out in the open where you can just grab them immediately. Uh, you'll find them in the bushes, kind of tucked in behind trees. And I found that this mode is very convenient in taking that, it's like using a single point focus mode, putting it on the subject, and then recomposing your shot to be able to get your image. Great for focusing through limbs, great for focusing in some kind of weird lighting conditions. Worked fantastic. Uh, didn't always grab the eye, um, but we'll talk about that a little later. When I switched out of the 3D mode and went to the full mode, you'll notice that there'd be some red squares uh, where it's kind of grabbing the subject. Uh, I'd go right back to 3D mode, put it on the subject, it would grab it again, and once again I'd recompose the shot. So the majority of my time, back up, probably about 50 to 60% of the time I was between AF uh, full and this 3D tracking mode, which found out was great. Okay, moving on, the full wide edge-to-edge uh, autofocus mode with the subject tracking uh, was once again the other half of the time I spent in that. Uh, this one was confusing at times because many times I'd put it on the subject and it would grab it immediately. Other times I'd put it on the subject and it would hunt around a little bit and the subject would be right in the tree with eyes facing forward and I would ask myself, why don't you see those eyes right there? Uh, bottom line, it struggled sometimes and that was a little frustrating and confusing, but then other times it would grab it immediately and no problem and grab the eye and everything was absolutely perfect. I don't know what to say about that full mode except that when it was a nice clean background and the birds were flying by in front of me, that was the mode to be in uh, because the 3D tracking didn't hold on to it as well as that full autofocus mode did in just picking that bird out of the scene as it was flying by. Uh, so as you're using the camera, you'll notice, uh, depending on the situation, that it works perfectly fine for some, and some of the other ones you might want to go back to 3D tracking, or if all else fails, you just go to that single point autofocus mode. Uh, grabbing birds in flight is what has kicked my butt for many years. I've gotten some great images of birds in flight, but what I'm about to tell you is a pretty bold statement and I'm not being um, hyperbolic about this. The evening I spent with these owls, I can assure you I took more in focus, sharp images in a matter of a few hours than maybe I did in the last nine years of photographing birds. I know that's a bold statement, but when you're firing off 20 frames a second and birds are flying by you left and right and it's grabbing focus almost every time, you can easily rack up more in focus flight shots than you ever have in your life. That is what you're gonna notice from day one with this camera, that if something's flying by, it grabs it, it holds on to it, and you're just gonna get some amazing images. Now, what about when it's not perfect? What about when they're not flying by you perfectly in flight? Uh, well, here's a couple of examples. Uh, I had the bird fly right out of the tree, the owl fly right out of the tree at me. I was 
kind of ready, but not totally ready. I wasn't paying as close attention as I should have. So I find myself scrambling and I'm thinking the autofocus just isn't keeping up. Then I go back and look at some of my images and I realize, man, I got seven or eight decent shots out of that that I would not have gotten with my other cameras. So even when the autofocus doesn't look like it's doing what it needs to do, some pretty amazing things are happening. Another example, when the bird came out of the tree, he hovered right in front of me for just a, um, maybe two seconds, just looked down at the ground, realized there was nothing there and continued to take off. I thought that I was gonna miss the whole thing. It grabbed focus right at the right moment. I fired off probably 60 shots. And in those 60 shots, I would say I have probably 20 of the best owl images I've ever taken in my life. Uh, so big win for the Z9. Another wonderful thing about these hybrid cameras is that when you're photographing birds and you wanna to switch to video, uh, you just flip that switch right there over to the video mode. It immediately goes into the new AF full. It's not new, it's been around with all the mirrorless. It goes into AF full and starts tracking immediately what you were looking at uh, through the screen that you were already focusing on. I don't press any buttons with AF full. It's automatically tracking it. All I'm doing is moving the camera to try to keep up with it. You know, of course, depending on the background, it might hunt a little bit, uh, but it does a pretty good job and I can't wait to try this in different circumstances as well. This is gonna be a beautiful tool to have out in the field. I've argued in the past that you can take great images. Uh, you absolutely can take great images with average gear. I've taken some bad images with this one, but this is gonna make your life easier, guys. Uh, I know that I've only shot this a week. I know I haven't gone around the world with it and I'm no subject matter expert on it. But the moment you put this in your hands, 20 minutes out in the field, you're gonna immediately see what we've been missing as Nikon uh, users. A1 already had this figured out. The Canon R5, which I've used, has this figured out. It does just as well as this. I'm just glad Nikon finally caught up. I'm glad we finally have that technology. Is it better than the R5? Is it better than the A1? I don't know, and I really don't think so because the limited amount of time I've had those in my hand, I was blown away, just like I was blown away with this one. Here's, here's what it comes down to, guys. You've got a tool in your hand now that's gonna allow you to get more images, and I recommend that if you're on the fence about this thing, uh, know that this is Nikon's best piece of equipment they've ever made, and uh, it is worth every penny. Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, if you're new and this is the first time you've stopped by and you wanna see what this channel is really about, I made a playlist. It's uh, you know kind of about me out in the field with my wife and a little more about storytelling. I don't do the sit down in front of the camera very often, uh, so don't expect a lot of this, but thank you for stopping by, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you do like what you see, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you aboard. And please hit that thumbs up or like or whatever it is. Uh, the more you like a video, the more YouTube shows it to other people. And I appreciate that. So thank you. Thanks again. Have a fantastic day. We'll see ya.